We need to talk about Kobe Mano because he is a sensational player, a dazzling footballer, a player who is going to the very top and a player who has it all. Is he the solution to everything? When you flag the problems with England, I think that there are probably only three areas of concern, three areas that can stop England winning in Germany. Some may say the goalkeeper. I think it's fair to say that the second centre-half is a problem. And I also think it's fair to say that the third midfielder is a problem. And I think I have a solution for one of them. And I think that answer is Kobe Maino. Kobe Maino is so accomplished. He is so gifted. And despite being such a tender age, he is such a complete footballer. If you're good enough, you're old enough. The old adage rings true. If you are good enough for football, you are old enough to play football. And England should learn from the countless examples of players that at one point seemed like precocious, young, arguably unproven talents who went on to be icons of a particular tournament. Cast your mind back to 1998. There were some brilliant players playing in the Premier League up front. And there was also this young, unproven, precocious young talent named Michael Owen. Now, Michael Owen was ripping it up. He was sensational. It was Beatlemania as everybody had their eyes on Liverpool games. When he scored goals, he did that iconic celebration where he rubbed his hands together. He was brilliant, but there were more proven footballers around. Ian Wright had just won a double. Matt Letitiae was scoring banger after banger after banger for Southampton. Andy Cole was scoring goals galore for both Newcastle and Manchester United in that period. Les Ferdinand scored goals for days wherever he went. The true definition of a bagsman. Robbie Fowler, some would say he's the most natural finisher that this country has ever produced. And yet Glenn Hoddle selected an 18-year-old who was scoring goals for Liverpool. And the 18-year-old did not let him down. What he did to that Argentina team, the way that he scored that amazing goal, pushing Paul Scholes out of the way. It was brave from Hoddle and he was rewarded. And then just a few years later, again, Faith was put in a young, brilliant, promising striker by the name of Wayne Rooney. And he scored those two beautiful goals in a scintillating display against Croatia. So there is a track record. There is a reason for this. There is a logic. There is a case study. Kobe Maino should be in Gareth Southgate's squad and not playing with the under-21s. There's still time. There is still a chance that Kobe Maino will make it, but I'm beginning to think that it won't happen. I think that Gareth Southgate now knows who he wants. I think that he is allowing his team to take shape. He is allowing his squad to take shape. And the fact that Kobe Maino has been told that he's going to be playing with the 21s means that he's not going to be the late bolter, the player who makes that late dash for the plane, the player who finds form at the perfect time. I'm beginning to think that even if Kobe Maino does find the form and continue the form that he's in, he is going to be overlooked by Southgate. And I fear that this is a desperate mistake. First things first, this isn't a video where I'm slating Southgate at all. One thing that I think we all have to agree on is that Gareth Southgate has been fantastic for the promising future of England. Gareth Southgate has been braver, he has been bold, and he has been daring with selecting young players. Absolutely not. Is it the case that Gareth Southgate blocks young players? It simply isn't true. So, this is a little bit deeper. Why is he ignoring the brilliance of Kobe Maynard? According to Southgate... Kobe Maino doesn't have the experience that Jude Bellingham had when he was given a call-up or that Bukayo Saka had when Gareth Southgate gave Bukayo his call-up. Now, I've done the research so you don't have to. And Gareth Southgate is telling the truth just, but maybe not by enough of a margin for this to actually be a logical reason. When Jude Bellingham received his first call-up for England in November 2020, he was 17 years old. He played 10 games for Dortmund and 44 for Birmingham City. So Jude Bellingham had played 54 games, 10 for Dortmund, only 10 in the top tier, a further 44 for Birmingham City. Bukayo Saka was 19 when he got his call up, so a little bit older than Kobe Maino is now, and he had played 44 times for Arsenal. Now, the outrageous performance for Kobe Maino against Liverpool was Maino's 23rd appearance for Manchester United. What's happening, everyone? Do not go anywhere. This is on a need-to-know basis, and trust me, you need to know. Everybody needs a bit of VPN action in their life. Trust me on this. I didn't even know what a VPN was that long ago. I got involved with it, and it changed everything. NordVPN provides a wonderful service. It's so affordable. It's comparable to the price of a cup of coffee, and guess what? One account allows you to link it to six different devices. So, you could give it to your mum for access. You could give it to your girlfriend for access. You could give it to your wife for access. You could give it to your dad for access. And you could still have some spare 
all off the back of one single purchase. There is also absolutely no risk, absolutely no jeopardy, because for some reason you don't like it, for some reason it doesn't quite chime with you, you've got a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you can really experiment, find out, does Nord work for you when you book your holidays? It stops websites tracking you, so you do get the best price. Sometimes you might want to watch films that aren't necessarily available in your location. You may want to watch football matches. Not me, but you may want to watch football matches that aren't available in your location. It's not possible without a VPN. NordVPN allows you to do that. You will never see that annoying message on Twitter ever again. You know when you want to watch a goal and it says it's not available in your location? It is now. So use my link in the description box below. It's NordVPN forward slash Rory. And if you use that, you will get four extra months completely for free. That's nordvpn.com forward slash Rory. The link is in the description box below. I think it's also fair to assume that Kobe Maynard would have played a similar number to both Bellingham and Bukayo Saka if he wasn't injured for the first three months of the season. You know, he made his debut in January 2023. I think that if he had been fit, he would have amassed a similar tally to both Bellingham and Saka. Also, I think it's fair to assume that he's going to be a key player for Manchester United as they move forward this season. So surely he can squeeze someone out of the squad. Surely he can find a way onto the plane to Berlin. Surely he can get in ahead of Jordan Henderson. Now, you know, at the beginning of this video, I flagged three issues with the first team. There are three points of contention in the first team, in the first 11, that I think we can have a conversation about. Now, the fact that one of them is the position that Kobe Mano plays so brilliantly means that I feel like it's a shoe in Listen, if a player was having the season that Kobe Mano is having, having the impact that Kobe Mano is playing, but maybe played up front, I would say that we don't need to rush him. We don't need to take him. We don't need to force him into the squad. We don't need to find room. We don't need to have a conversation about it. Because in that position, England are well equipped. In that position, England have Harry Kane. And then out of the top 10 goal scorers in the Premier League, six of them are English. You've got Tony to consider. You've got Watkins to consider. You've got Solanke to consider. So we don't need to talk about a young, relatively unproven talent. Kobe Mayno, however, is different. England need him. He's exactly what we need. Imagine the player that Declan Rice will be this tournament with Kobe Mano alongside him. Imagine the player that Jude Bellingham will be this tournament with Kobe Mano alongside him. And then crucially, imagine the player that Kobe Mano will be with Rice and Bellingham alongside him. Imagine what it will do. He is such a good player. He's exactly what we need. He's a deep-lying playmaker who is excellent on the ball, has an eye for a goal, and he's gaining experience rapidly in high-pressure situations. Now, sometimes a way to demonstrate quite how important a player is, quite how good a player is, is to analyse who plays if they don't. Let's look at the competition, shall we? James Ward-Prowse. I mean, he's a very good player. He's a very good Premier League player. And that is a huge compliment. I think he's an excellent Premier League player. But I honestly don't think James Ward-Prowse is the answer to England's problems. Calvin Phillips. I'm appalled with myself. I'm having a moment of self-loathing here because I've fallen into the trap of even considering Calvin Phillips for this position. Calvin Phillips, it should not be in contention. Calvin Phillips should not be mentioned on this video. Calvin Phillips must not play for England. Calvin Phillips must not go to the Euros. If there is any sort of meritocracy to this England squad, Calvin Phillips' name should not be mentioned. And therefore, I'm saying no more about him. His name is Bard from the Rory Jennings YouTube channel. Some are suggesting Trent Alexander-Arnold could be the answer. Now look, I think, I think on some level that could work. But there feels to me like there's a lot of jeopardy around that. People talk about Trent Alexander-Arnold playing as a midfielder, clearly having the ability, and I think it's true. But I don't think you should be learning on the job. And I think his only experience playing for England in this position is against Malta. You can't be learning how to play that position at a tournament. He needs to be playing there for his club regularly, or at least playing there for England regularly. Let's see what happens in these friendlies against uh, Brazil and Belgium, shall we? But... If he doesn't get given an opportunity then, I don't really want to see it at a tournament. Conor Gallagher. I think Conor Gallagher is a great player for Chelsea. I think he's been brilliant. I think he's been our best midfielder, undoubtedly, and one of the best players in Chelsea's squad this season. I would like to see Conor Gallagher given an opportunity. I can see it happening, but I can also see why some would say Kobe Mano is a better option. Gallagher is wonderful for what Gallagher is wonderful at. And there are times where Gallagher is going to be the answer ahead of Kobe Mano. But... The way that Kobe Mano is so comfortable on the ball, the way that he is so calm and so composed, the way that he is so at ease when under immense threat is very different to Gallagher. They're different styles of players. 
And depending on the opposition, I think a Rice, Bellingham, Gallagher solution is fair against other oppositions. Rice, Bellingham, Mayno. I think it really works. Now, Jordan Henderson. Jordan Henderson must not go to this competition. I know he's going to go, and I think it's totally and utterly unjust. Jordan Henderson is a wonderful footballer. He has been a wonderful footballer. He has been an excellent servant to both Liverpool and to England. He is one of the best captains that Liverpool have ever had. But it's over. It's over. The second that he signed up to that Saudi league, his England career was over. And coming and having some sort of performative hiatus at Ajax in a season where it's not going well for them and his performances are not good enough, it doesn't work. Now, I do understand that when football fans like you and I talk about football, we only judge it on the football. Gareth Southgate is the manager of the squad, needs to think on a bigger level. He needs to have a happy squad. He needs to have a happy camp. He needs to have leaders around. He needs to have experience around. But surely we can find that experience in vessels that aren't completely knackered and deserve to be there. Harry Kane is very experienced. John Stones is very experienced. Carl Walker is very experienced. Jordan Pickford is very experienced. Harry Maguire, a player who probably doesn't deserve to go either, is going to go. And he is also very experienced. So surely Jordan Henderson isn't the answer. See what I mean? Via process of elimination, Kobe Mayno simply has to go. And Southgate, I implore you to take this opportunity. You've been presented with a gift here. And it's a gift that you cannot ignore. So many times for England, under Southgate's tenureship, it has gone wrong for England in midfield. Think about what happened in Moscow. The midfield is what capitulated, and it was the brilliance of Modric that saw Croatia make the World Cup final. Fast forward three years to Wembley, and it happened again. Again, England lost control of the midfield. Again, Southgate relinquished the power in the midfield. Roberto Mancini took the game by the scruff of the neck via Jorginho. Mason Mount was being run ragged by Jorginho because England didn't control the midfield. We were playing at home in a tournament at Wembley, in a packed Wembley, in the pouring rain against a very average Italian team. An Italian team that didn't even make it to either World Cup, either side of that tournament. And yet, they totally dictated the tempo of the midfield. England lost at home in a final because of the midfield. Suddenly, we have Rice who is the best midfielder in England. We have Bellingham, who is the best player in Spain. And we have Kobe Mayno, who is the jewel in the crown, the rough diamond that Southgate can polish and protect and use to his advantage. I'm actually going to do my best to pledge love and loyalty to Southgate. There is no point in flagging that he shouldn't be manager for the Euros, if you think that, because he is manager. So let's get behind the lads. But surely, Gareth, surely the brilliance of Kobe Mayno in that fixture at Anfield alone Surely we need him. Surely he has to go. This is the answer to your prayer. There were only three issues with the squad at the beginning of this video. Having completed this video and explored it, I think we are down to two. So there we have it. I believe that Kobe Mayno has to go to the Euros. He must play for England. We need him. He's everything that we need. He is so perfect. The technical ability is through the roof. The collectedness on the ball. The poise with which he moves. His eye for a goal. His range of passing. Kobe Mayno. I think he is the difference maker. So there we have it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give it a like. Please click subscribe. It would be my honor to welcome you into this community. Thank you so much for watching.